Well, because you heard it was $2 beer night, that's why. <laughs> Let's take a look at the starting lineup brought to you by Jeep. There's only one. Bynum, who is the straw that stirs the drink. Lock, an outstanding shooter. Carter, a lockup defender. Hopkins, a possible player of the year. Award winner in Croswell, a bully in the paint. The Huskies will see these games like it was yesterday, especially against a team like Providence, who's just up the road. It's going to be a big one. And the opening tap control to the Huskies. Kristen Newton will run the show. And it's important for UConn to establish what they're trying to do on this end of the floor. And I think that has to be the paint. Not the way you want to start at home, and it, it keeps the crowd out of it. Right away, the pull through by Bynum. Providence will clamp you down defensively with Carter and Bynum in that backcourt. The matchup I'm looking at is the Hopkins Caravan matchup. It's a youngster against a, a professional. Already, look at that duck one. Yeah. Beautifully done. <laughs> I mean, that, that's something that Danny Hurley's staff obviously talked about that at shoot around today that we we were we were at and watched. But I think Caravan's going to need some help. As good as he is, that is a load to have to handle of Bryce Hopkins. Nice pass by Newton. Cutting in there, Andre Jackson with the first bucket. Yeah, the focus can't be all on Jordan Hawkins if you're Providence. you got to pay attention to the baseline. They do a nice job, Caravan and Jackson, of slashing and cutting along, doing their work behind the D. And then getting the pick from Broswell. Knocked away by Hawkins. End to end, and he slipped by lock. Saved by Providence. What a job by Bynum there. Numbers. Roswell had it knocked away. As Carter was trying to find him, but good work by Connecticut breaking up that two on one. I, I love the hustle by Adama Sinogo. You know, we talk about the jump hooks and his size and his strength and what he does rebounding the ball, but defensively, he's gotten much better this season as well, and you saw it right there. Off the bench. Mm, boy, I tell you what, <laughs> that, that's just not a good sign for any defender to see Bryce Hopkins not only get a layup and then then to step out for a mid-range jumper. Tells you the kind of mood he's in already. <laughs> Sonogo with Croswell on his hip. Another steal, an air pass again, and Bynum brings it down. Hopkins on the wing. Newton clears for Connecticut. And he's pushing it. And pushing it good. Newton from downtown. Got a lot of criticism about the backcourt of UConn. And, and I think it's unfair. You know, you talk about a guy. We, we, we've mentioned that he's got two triple doubles this season. It, it all can't be that bad for their backcourt. A lot of it unwarranted as well, Timmy. Yeah. That'll have some of the blame, I guess. <laughs> That's a walk. On the pump fake, he moved his pivot foot, did lock, and it'll go the other way. I mean, when things don't go well here, I blame you. I probably <laughs> should be blaming myself, but I blame you. That's just what teammates do. <laughs> it's the difference between a four-star talent and a five-star talent. That's it. Yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> Didn't you re read the recruiting news? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sonogo, beautifully down the caravan. Little high-low. And the big fella, good way to go. Interesting. Ed Cooley told us at shoot around this morning that their communication with their calls defensively have to be on point. He said, you can't just yell yo to a teammate. You have to call out a name, pick right. Yellow, blue, whatever the call is defensively, and what a miscommunication there. Carter bought a little bit of iron to go along with backboard to knock it down, and it's seven to six. I love that kid. I, I just do defensively. He he makes you fall in love with how he plays his athleticism, Devin Carter. But now at the offensive end, really found a niche to score the ball in so many ways. Both of these teams use the portal beautifully, right on cue. Carter with the deflection. That's four times now. The Huskies have turned it over in four minutes. Hopkins has 
Here's his pocket pick by Luton, and then he'll pick up the foul. Really good D. Way to get after it. Can't I think a lot of these teams have to argue about. Oh, you see where DeCourcy's projection of them uh, is. And I think to Mike's credit, and we need to remember this, the job of the guys that are bracket gurus is to think along with the committee. And that's right. exactly what he did. Right. He has them in the five hole. Uh, I'll say this, that among those five teams that have played at such a high level in the Big East, the team to me it's been the most slight. It is Providence. And Agreed. Ed Cooley is accustomed to that. In fact, he, he likes off <laughs> Agreed. Off of. Agreed. We've had a lot of conversations with him, you know, off record. And he knows that this small little school in Rhode Island is, a, is forgotten about a lot. But when you play them, you you always remember them. And that, that's pretty much the same MO. You talked about it off the top about what Ed Cooley has built and what their reputation is, and he's fine with wherever you put him, as long as they're winning games. Well, Tristan Newton got that bucket. We've had 15 possessions and seven total turnovers. Some jitters, yeah. maybe a little bit. Well, the defenses are so good, so quick. Boswell this time on the double. Walks, and it's turned over. It's not a live ball turnover, but one that I know Ed Cooley anticipates. Those quick doubles of his bigs when the ball is entered. So w what happens now is you can't play the play offensively. If you see someone jump out, you have to be looking behind your big. As a guard, you have to see everything. You can't put Ed Croswell in that position where now he's got two guys running at him. Maybe hold it a click, see how the defense reacts. If no one jumps down there, you pass it. That could be a skip pass to the corner as well. As a guard, you have to read everything. Reed and Clifton Moore have come into the game, replacing Bynum and Croswell for Providence. That's a tough pass, but I think Moore had Sonogo around the midsection that time as he attempted an overplay, and Clifton Moore doesn't take long to get into the foul column himself. I don't think Clifton Moore has to gamble here. I mean, I think you can do your work early, push Sonogo out and understand he likes to go over the left shoulder. So keep him going the other way. You have size if you're more, and you have that. Hawkins off the inbounds. Snuck past Carter, and the Huskies lead by five. Remember, this is uh, Sonogo last time, 11.7 rebounds, only nine touches against Providence. I think they got to continue to try to get him involved, especially with foul situations for Croswell and Clifton Moore. Well, he's not taking a shot as yet. Here off the dribble handoff to Newton. And a whirling dervish that comes off the heel, and it's rebounded by Carter. And what I love about Providence is they make you play their way. They're going to be physical with you. They're going to use every foul up that they have. Well, Carter and Locke not looking good from deep early. And that could become problematic for the Friars if they don't get what they need from their backcourt. Right away, Jaden Pierre, the freshman from Elizabeth, New Jersey, out of uh, Lutheran, comes into the game number one for the Friars, and that will allow Noah Locke to rethink matters on the bench for a short time. Well, you can't go away from who you are. Bryce Hopkins off to a great start. You have to continue to go to him. That's great pressure by Carter, and that's what he does. He'll come down, maybe shoot an air ball in this situation, and then now create a turnover at the other end. You need him on the floor. We've talked about those guys as force multipliers. You better look them up than without them. Yeah, the South Carolina transfer has been so important to this team. Got it on the rim and a tap out. And Hopkins off the recycle has that one off the heel. Pulled away by Aline. I love you're going to the rim. <laughs> yeah, you know they're going to the rim. Pulled down by Moore. Right away, Breed. Pierre this time off the mouse. Shoulders not squared. Yeah, Caravan I, don't, clear. I don't care for it, Tim. I, I just think it's too fast. You just get in the game, swing that ball, make the defense shift side to the floor. You can get that pull up anytime you want, but not right now. It's been a three minute drop now for Providence. But UConn is really not taking much advantage of it. It'll go the other way. Klingon just into the game with a moving pick. And he picks up 
his first personal. He had yeah. only gotten into the game just moments ago. And this is where big struggle a lot. Just wait on your guard. You can't lean in late. I mean, the problem is, too, is Pierre comes up to his waist, Klingon's waist, so it looks like he's sticking that leg out. But, you know, if you're a big, just get there, set it, and then roll. You can't move into it. It's the guard's job to make sure you're set. Even though you're getting the foul call, got to put that one on your guard. Still a couple of minutes for either team to score. Providence uh, almost four minutes. Their laps. As they look for a good shot. Reed against Calcaterra, who just checked in. Moore on the offensive glass and a recycle. Uh-oh, that one almost went to the cheap seats. Carter, with some good verticality, saves it. The runner, Nylon. Well, the two guys you want to get the ball to when things are kind of out of whack is Devin Carter and Bryce uh, Hopkins. Hasn't gotten a touch. Really, that one three that I think he forced up a little bit, but you need to get Bryce Hopkins back into the sweet spot again. Well, PC had missed seven straight shots until that bucket. Dillon! And a beautiful dime dropped off by Diera. Hassan Diera, the Texas AM transfer, leaves it for the local star out of Bristol, Connecticut, number 32 in life. And it's important for them to get clean and going, Timmy. Last five games, he's averaging 14 points per minutes per game. Only 14 minutes per game. He's got to find a way to stay on the floor, Klingon. And Moore drains one from downtown, so it's quickly 13 to 11. Moore's not going to shoot a lot. Can stretch you out, though, and that's another part of that, making Klingon a little uncomfortable defensively. Now, Katera, or as uh, his head coach loves to call him, Joey California. Caravan up against the clock, has it knocked away. Shot clock violation, and the Flyers at it. As the under 12 timeout hits. And he's got the ears of his guys. If you come to practice, especially, he's talking their language. And that's what's key. I always think the, the, the great coaches not only listen to, but they respect their assistants. And that's so important. Can't micromanage your assistants. You gotta let them help you. You're absolutely right. He's got a couple of former head coaches on that staff. Calcaterra with the pilfer. Aline leaves, leaves it for Calcaterra, but uh, he's well defended there by Hopkins on the switch. Great opportunity for UConn to pay it off. Terrific defensive stop. You funnel Floyd right into Kling, and now you gotta pay it off with a good offensive set through the Huskies. Calcaterra. He's an outstanding shooter, but just no room there against the defense. And it was outstanding. Another shot clock violation, but Reed did the number that time on Joey C. And they will struggle with this lineup on the floor. You know, you, you have guys who can score the ball, but not understanding really where that's going to end sometimes hurts you. That's why you'll see Bryce Hopkins on the floor most of the game for Ed Cooley. Hopkins on the switch now will take the three. And knock it down right over Klingon. Look, it, it, you got to have a steady diet, especially on the road of your stud, who I think more than likely is going to be the MVP of this conference this year, Bryce Hopkins. Yeah. You've got to give him the ball as much as he can take it in terms of his win. It's in great shape. Got to give it to him. Step back, Trey. <laughs> Naheem Ali. Virginia Tech transfer, one of the seniors honored tonight on senior night. Only Calcaterra, though, has used up his eligibility. And it's unfair when you criticize a team that's struggling and you look at your least favorite spot on the floor that's guards. It's, it's by committee for UConn. And we've got another foul as Klingon yeah. came down with that rebound. That's Croswell. Two on him. Two quick ones. On Croswell, especially in a game like this that you anticipate to be so physical, you don't want Croswell picking up a third before halftime. Now check that. They, they, it is his first. They credited one to Croswell earlier that went to another player for Providence. So it's just one, but you don't want to pick up a, a quick second. And he 
fortunately, as the as earlier one called on Hopkins rather than him. If you're Ed Cooley, you're like thinking, hey, we're down two, we're shooting 38 percent, we're fine, and we're going to make shots. And this is where Ed Croswell, you need him, he dominates on the glass. And he's just got an, an edge to him as well, which Ed really likes. Off the pick, there's the three ball. Bynum, look out if he gets warmed up. Another guy I think is underrated. I know he was a, a preseason All Biggies first team pick, but still a little underrated this time of year. Comes up with big shots, makes the right plays. Well, when they lost him in January, they slumped. Yeah. They really needed him Three. to get back, and he did. So they'll go. Right? It's almost like they're daring him to shoot. Hawkins, well, you know, lately, I think Connecticut has played through him a lot more so than Sonogo. And I, this guy, Hawkins, has just been outstanding. He's, a, he's an NBA player, yeah. without question. Yeah, you better enjoy him now, UConn fans. you got about another month or two with him in that uniform. As we wow. mentioned, six lead changes, and Bynum now has knocked down a pair of threes, and the Friars lead by a deuce. This is where I think UConn sometimes gets stuck a little bit. They don't flow into their offense. They're, they're looking to Hurley to see what they're running. And, and that comes when you struggle a little bit. And against Providence, you got to be able to flow into that against that defense. But this is what you're talking about. The Hawk is out. Jordan Hawkins. The lost art is back. He reclaimed it. The mid-range jumper from Ed Cooley. Dan Hurley's, like you mentioned, done a very, a, a much better job, I think, than, than he ever has right. with this UConn team this year. And that's what we respond to better as players. Absolutely. Well, the score reflects the rankings of these two teams. 20-18, <laughs> <laughs> Providence leading by a deuce. In another life, he could be, uh, Cooley could be a headline writer for the oh, New York Post. I mean, come on. <laughs> I, he could be anything. Yeah, I mean, he no really could. He's that, he really is that special. Caravan trying to force a bounce pass entry leads to a turnover. And, and there you go, Tim. The, the, the conversation they have in that timeout now leads, you have to imagine, to that turnover being connected. Seven minutes, zero shots, Adama Sonoma. Just, it, it can't happen. There's, there's, guys, this, this is not a coaching thing either. This is, as a teammate, I'm going to guys and we have to get our big fella in back. Locke takes it into the painted area. Forced into a tough shot by Hawkins, but he knocks it down. The fadeaway, and it's 22 to 18. 13 minutes gone by. I think it's important to mention, too, for Shinogo, he's 10 of 22 his last two games, but only five attempts in their last game against Seton Hall, against a small Seton Hall team. Hawkins pulls up over Carter. Well, if you're not going to run anything for him, just yeah. go get it. Yeah. Get it on the rim and let the big guy go get it. Sonogo down there really trying to get himself involved in this game. Hopkins again working against Caravan. Some help from Sonogo. It's a rejection. Jackson tries to save it, but does to Carter. Now Newton, what effort. And a skip pass to Hawkins. Oh, how do you do? UConn stole three right there. With that. Yeah, that's the wrong way. It's yeah. going back to Providence. Yeah. 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 And uh, quickly, Matt Potter changed his tune. He got a little help. A good <laughs> early lap, so he knows the call was, <laughs> was the correct one. Seventeen on the clock. There, you go. there it is. Sonogo, right where you want it. Nice 
puck under past Croswell. It's just a, a, a nice recognition. You see your big down low. He's done so much for you, and you know you need him to win a game like this. Give him the ball. Adam loses his dribble. The outlet to Newton. Nine unanswered now for UConn. Yeah, I, I'm picking my nits here a little bit, but I would have given that to Sonovo as well. Get him going. Nonetheless, you get a, a, a leak out dunk. Gets this building into it. Partial to the bigs. <laughs> Carter. Another offensive rebound by Croswell. He's so strong in there. Off the heel it goes. Wow. Find him one more time. Can't give it, it home. Can't give a team like Providence that many opportunities. Yep. How about the play Woo. that time to read cross yeah. court skip pass? right to the open guy that he knew had a better chance of knocking it down than him. Yeah, and really, they, they, he was left open, and we've seen that a lot with, with Jackson being left open. Makes the correct play, finding a shooter, and now finding Sonogo down low. Well, that's one that Adamo Sonogo normally makes. Look at Jackson save it. Oh, right to Hawkins. Oh. But the iron unkind, and here go the Friars again. Trying for a quick bucket. That's a good guy to have it right there. Bottom in traffic. Can't connect and caravan clears. I love this pace, though. This is where I think UConn's at their best. Not looking over their own. Oh, turn it over. Not, not looking over their shoulder to see what the next call is going to be. Just play. Uh, Three. I get it. I'm giving it to we're you. In, we're, you know, we're, we're in my old gym. You're being, that's just who you are. You're a giver. You gotta get it. Big Daddy B's always good. Big Daddy B. <laughs> well, we've had a four-minute stretch with only four total points. Neither team is led by more than five. Block gets it high off the window and knocks it down. He was oh. waiting for an end one. Wow. He didn't get it. He couldn't believe it. I think they called it a travel. Yeah, they, they did. They wow. called the walk. He had a bunny hop. He was looking back after he had yeah. made the shot. He was like, wait a minute. Where's the hoop and the horn? And it was called a walk inside. 27-25, Huskies by two. Well, they love the dribble handoff, don't they? They really do. Not, not a lot of high bit, you know, pick, pick and rolls. It's all handoffs. Now, that was his M.O. when he got here. A big-time face-up shooter. And the lead is back to five, equaling the largest that either team has had so far tonight. Under three to play in the first. Playing like a, a Big East freshman of the year to me. Caravan all season long. Nothing really jumps off the page, but man, he plays hard. Well, give Locke credit. This time he said he's going to take it right to the rack. And he got there for the easy deuce. Carter back on the floor checking Hawkins. To me, that's one of the great off-ball matchups oh. to watch tonight. 22 uh, Providence on 24 of UConn. Talk about Devin Carter. Could quite possibly be the defensive player of the year in this conference, but also in America. Boy, the work for that, to me. You could tell if you watched that transition off the ball just how hard Hawkins had to work to get it. He's got nine, and the lead... Is back to five. Moves so well off the screens, curls, pin downs. You really have to stay connected to him. It's easier said than done. Bynum from three. And that's a good defender. He got it over, too. More than token contests from Hawkins on the defensive end. 32 to 30. Bynum with 12. Four for four from three-point range. He's been outstanding. Caravan again. Well, Newton tried to keep it alive and knock it down. Here comes Bynum the other way. Providence, six of their last eight buckets have been the three-point variety. A 
just just beautiful work by Noah Locke. It's such a wonderful weapon to have. You know he can knock it down from three-point range, but his ability to get in the paint and then be squared up and on balance is so special. Cooley did. You look at Carter. You add to that, you know, Bynum, who came over from St. Joe's, Noah Locke from Louisville. I mean, these guys have all made incredible contributions to a team that lost so much of its talent that won the regular season title a year ago. Nice wow. inside, a beautiful dump down. Eight new players for Ed Cooley. Just don't know what you're going to get, but great play by Caravan. Size advantage down low, just keeps it simple. Well, Sonogo gets the ball down there. It's over. Caravan taking some tips from Sonogo. Yes, indeed. He knows what to do with it when he gets it down low. From three. Aline. Those are shots you have to make. Shot clock off. You're running into it. You got 19 seconds to go in the half. You got to make them. And the lead back to five as they hold it for one, the Friars. Carter has it rejected by Sonogo. Dramatic finish. Even made one in a position where maybe they're not comfortable or used to being, and they'll take that shot when you have to understand on the road in the Big East, you gotta know who you are, and, and really it begins and ends with Bryce Hopkins. It has to to get a win in this building. UConn was plus eight in the paint. By the way, we've got a foul off the ball. And that goes against Sinogo. His first. But eight, they're plus eight in the paint. They're plus five from their bench and plus five in fast break points. And that's uh, the reason that they have this five point cushion. Hopkins right on cue, missed the chippy. Everything but the finish, he comes down gingerly off his left ankle, favoring it a little bit. How about that though, deflection? Something little, Tim, but it saves a three point play. Or a three-pointer, excuse me. Just that little deflection, you slow things down, and now you get a chance to get all your defenders back set. Beautifully done inside. Hawkins from Sonogo. 39-32. That is now the largest lead for either team tonight. 11 assists for the Huskies. Jackson on the overplay, comes away with a pilfer. Newton waits for help. Good place to find some right there. Hawkins makes it a 10-point game. Got to talk about it if you're Providence. No, oh, to me, one of the greatest shooters to ever play the game said, if your feet, if your, if your feet ain't right, nothing's right. <laughs> Let me guess. <laughs> Well, number 34 played in this building. Yes. Who Jordan Hawkins has been compared to, but if your feet ain't right, nothing's right as a shooter. Uh, it was 33-32 with a minute to play in the first half. Since then, the Huskies are a 10-0 run against the Friars. They desperately need a bucket here. And Hyman, a heat-seeking missile to the 10, makes it happen. You need your leaders to kind of calm things down, diffuse the issues on the road and that's exactly what Bynum has done time and time again now talk about putting plays together you gotta you gotta fuck it on the offensive end you gotta get a stop down here for Providence so no go nice ball fake drops it off for Newton a little too unselfish perhaps right there save though back to Newton another rebound on the offensive end by Seno that the work the smart play by Sonogo everyone knows he's shooting threes a little shot fake to Croswell get to the basket you just stay in the play you gotta put a body on him there's some high low big to big as Hopkins feeds Croswell a hoop and some harm how about this Throw it down low, and, and that's what's going to be exposed. It started that way against Caravan. He's going to 
He's going to become a much better defender, but right now trying to learn how to move those feet at this level has been a challenge for him. Great recognition by Providence. And our first free throw of the night <laughs> yeah. is converted. The old-fashioned three-point play by Croswell. And then a little miscommunication with Jackson for the turnover. Yeah, Jackson patted his chest immediately. That was his fault. You can't dance, is, is what coaches would say on your big man. If you're going to be there, be there. If not, make a hard cut. Can't go back and forth. Be precise. To Adama's credit, he, he just told Jackson that's on me. Yeah, both of them said, my, my fault. You love that. Right. Teammates acknowledging. Here's off the box. Fouled by Caravan. So two quick ones on Caravan to open the second half. And, and I thought initially really good defense by Caravan. You just reach in a little bit, hit that wrist on the shooter. And that was a, a spot that you want Hopkins in. You want him shooting a, a mid-range jumper to try to get himself going. Just reached in a little bit. Bryce had been hitting a 22.7 per game clip in his last three games. That's his first point in 13 plus minutes of this game. Had a career high time 29 in the loss to St. John's. Well, they've got to get him the ball. And sometimes give him some room to work. Uh oh. Jackson with numbers. coming <laughs> from 94 feet. <laughs> you reach, you go for a steal and don't get it against UConn, you pay. Find him right back at you. Sonoga with a rejection. Action Jackson! And the tip in by Sonoga. I think Jackson preferred Sonoga to put in. Yeah. The lead is back to nine. Caravan with him. That's going to be number three. That's three fouls on Caravan in the opening 350 of the second half. Well, they did this in the first matchup against Caravan. You attack the freshman, you take advantage of maybe that lack of foot speed, but here, anytime you see Jackson open court, whether with or without the ball, you know something good is going to happen for you guys. Ed Croswell, the transfer from LaSalle. Now up to 13 and 7 on the year. That's very effective. He reached a career 1,000 points for the 21 point performance. And that uh, most recent outing against Villanova. 48 to 41. Huskies by 7. Not quite four minutes gone by. Hawkins. Off the back rim. Hopkins draws the double, gives it up to Carter. Lock, that's his spot. He loves that wing shot. And just like that, it's 48 to 44. What I love about Noah Lock's release is he, where he catches that ball, he does not bring it down. He catches and releases it from that same height, never bringing it down to his waist. Well, Pierre was really dogging Newton there. Providence fell behind by 10, but defense travels, doesn't it? Defense travels. And it's down to two. You don't want to play around with the ball in front of Devin Carter. <laughs> He's dynamite. Oh. Got such great anticipation, but also the athleticism to go along with it. Well, Ed Cooley is the biggest fan of his Providence Riders right now. Position because that Marquette victory last night at Creighton was as good a road win as you could possibly get. Big time in late February. Congratulations to Scott Sparta. The job he's done. Well, that's going to be a block. 
Croswell got there a little late. Neil Hopkins have really ignited this Providence run. That's number two on Croswell. And he saw it coming. He just couldn't get his feet over there quick enough to get him set, get squared, and, and, and take the hit. But you mentioned Shaka Smart. Got to be the front runner for Big East Coach of the Year. Not only that, he's considered for National Coach Absolutely. of the Year as well. Absolutely. He's got a pretty good guard, too. He <laughs> really does. Yeah. Some great athletes. Play together, play the right way. Hawkins fouled by Carter. And that may be three. That may be a three-shot foul. I believe it is, yes. This is what Devin Carter has to be aware of. You know, the lower body of... The lower body, the right leg just miss it, kind of kicks out. Got to be aware. Shooters now are very crafty. There's no more straight up, straight down. They're trying to bait you in a little bit, get get into their, get you into their airspace so they can get a couple of free throws. These are the first free throws of the night for UConn. Who better than Hawkins to take them? Star from Samantha Catholic in the state of Maryland. Newton has taken a seat. Hassan Diara has checked in for him, number five and right. 51 46. These two teams keep throwing haymakers at one another. That one was knocked away by Diara. <laughs> and uh, that is giving that Potter a piece of his mind. <laughs> Always working. You got to work the refs on the road. You know you might be at a little bit of disadvantage. You have the crowd behind you. Here's Pierre. On a blowback. And he's fouled. Although there's a, a nice Friars contingency. I mean, they're, they're really doing a nice job of traveling with their team. They didn't have to go very far. But great drive here. That's just a, a silly one when you... By Diara, if you have Klingon behind you, you don't need to slap down on the ball. You let your funnel it to your big guy and let him do his thing. I don't even think Pierre was trying to score. I think he was going to continue to dribble along the baseline. Yeah, he actually dribbled into the no man's land. Yeah. And Moore will come into the game to give Croswell a little time to rest. When you've got that many rim protectors, and Providence does, I mean, you're a you can play with a lot of freedom yeah. defensively along the perimeter. Yeah, you don't want to put them in a bad spot and, and force them into foul trouble early. But you're right. You can gamble a little. You can be a little bit more aggressive. Different reads on the ball. Yeah, you know you got bigs back there. Up to 10 free throws now in the second. <laughs> Up to zero. Three in the first. He's yeah. feeling it tonight. He really gets those shoulders squared so quickly. It really is a, an awesome thing to watch. Lock a fadeaway, tough take. Rebound by Jackson. He's got those dreads working tonight. Trying to hit Cohen. He was the last to touch it. And he does that from time to time, Jackson. Yeah. He'll he'll float one up there. He'll take a risk. One, another one of those guys like Devin Carter. You got to play through those mistakes because he does so many great things for the Shukon team. I asked Jackson before the game, how long are you going to go with the drugs? He said, oh, I don't know. Maybe a couple of weeks. Maybe maybe I'll go back to the air flows tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> That's the life of a college student. Yeah, you got a lot of Day to day. Carter. Klingon was out there and maybe really put that ball high. And there's another giveaway foul by Diara. And you don't need it. He, Clifton Moore is not trying to score down there. He was, again, trying to dribble out of the double. Great job by Moore. But here, you don't need to reach in. It's it's a, it's two silly fouls by Diara. Hawkins, Dalton Carter. Locked, tough shot. Again, Jackson, so good to pitch it. Why not give it back to Hawkins? Hawkins has six in his half. Twenty on the night. How about that? Great helpful. save. Tell Just you, amazing effort there. Yeah, you know, Diara, a couple of silly fouls, but this 
the, the guard contingency of, of UConn has been a, done a nice job of adding to the game what it needs defensively, hustle plays, knocking down shots. Klingon, great defensive work by Hopkins. How about that deflection? And then a frustration foul, really. And, and really a situation where Providence will be shooting the rest of the way, so all those no foul shots early is going to catch him up. Yeah, 17. I mean, we haven't played seven minutes of this second yeah. half, and that's the 17th foul on Connecticut. That'll extend the game. They're regressing to the mean. I know there were zero yep. in the first half. They're going to make up for him here. And that was a freshman error, really, by Klingon, too, because it's a deflection. The ball has gotten away from you. No reason to foul that far away from the basket. So Diara and Klingon now have made some mistakes that you don't normally see Connecticut make. And a, a nice position for Providence to be in, to be able to score the ball, clock stop. Pretty good free throw shooting team as well. If Moore makes both, it's 54 to 50. As you watch this half, and some of the first half really, you got a feeling that UConn might be up double digits, and there you are, just three down. Yeah, you got to stay connected. To, to Hawkins, he can can just move and move and move. Klingon off the lob. And a sarcastic response from the crowd as the foul is called on Moore. <laughs> this is an, a nice play. There, there are not a lot of ball screens by UConn. They're just, they don't run a ton of them like most teams do in college basketball. But when you have a smaller lineup, you got to put clean in that and just throw it up where only he can catch it. Great play. This is a young man who's only scratching the surface as a star talent. He wears the number 32 for his late mom, Stacy, who was a star basketball player in her own right at Maine. A strong contingent of family and friends yeah. that are always here. Always. From nearby Bristol, Connecticut. But another one of those kids. Always. Last five games, 14 minutes a game. And, and I think, you know, that UConn has won four or five of those. But four of those five. But he's a guy that's hit that wall a little bit. And, and early knows that. So putting him in good positions. And here's a push from the backside. That's a lean. I think it's going to get tagged for that one. A little too handsy on the defensive end right now, UConn. That's a good call. It's a good call, and it's it's a great recognition. I think I think Hopkins might have slipped there. There was some contact. There's always contact, but you have to be aware. The refs also understand that this game's going to get more physical, and in, in although. He slipped. The foul may have occurred before that. Yeah. Well, Bryce has gone wire to wire tonight. He's not had one second on the bench. Carter does take a seat. So Pierre is now in the backcourt, along with Bynum. And Croswell will check back in as well. And Hopkins, for the first time, will get uh, a blow along the bench just before the 12 minute and under television timeout. Yeah, Hurley's recently as you see the zone look from Providence here, Hurley recently has said, you know, toughness. We're trying to see how tough this team is and they've, they've shown it in this game UConn. Arlene, Arlene. Home. Great example. They're playing through contact, the physicality of the Friars, and they're shooting 56% still, Timmy. And up six. 8 of 16 from downtown. <laughs> that will certainly help your quest. Corey Floyd, the Connecticut transfer, is now on the deck for Providence. Where will the points come from with this Friars lineup? Yep. Moore trying to work pick and roll. Pierre can't get that one to go. Jackson saves it. Quick reach in foul that will stop the clock at 11:38. I'm sure Ed Cooley's thinking, okay, good, we got to the uh, under 12 time. Much of yeah. the Providence scoring in this half has been at the line where they've given up 11 free throws. 
to the prize. And of course, uh, will likely be in the double bonus pretty soon. And Providence is plus nine on the glass, one of the best rebounding teams in America. So you have to focus on keeping those guys out of that area. Here's Jackson going to the left hand. It's always there for the taking. Yeah. For Jackson, Andre just very rarely looks to score. 60 to 52. The Cassidy crowd is smelling a run. Yeah, UConn really doing a great job jumping the ball to reading the eyes of the offensive players. If you're Noah Locke, you got to look the other way, maybe even a ball fake to the opposite side of the floor before you throw that little bounce pass to Bryce Hopkins. But a lot of telegraphing going on offensively for Providence. Bynum, too strong. Newton spears it out of the air. And a walk. Raheem Aleem got in a hurry that time and turned it over. And only one tray in this half. After six in the first for Providence, they've made up some of that at the free throw line. Early having a spirited conversation with Mike Roberts. It's one ref you probably want to keep the conversation short. With. Yes. <laughs> Speaking sitting fragments. That's it. <laughs> Hassan Diara again. You can make a case that this might have been initiated by Bynum. You really can. And that's a, a third foul on Diara, but a reach in again. Right. Technically, even though you're right, I think Bynum might have initiated that contact, but smart play by Bynum. You know, again, you're getting to the foul line. You're shooting the rest of the way. We got ten and a half minutes to go. A little bit like a veteran player in the NBA, right? That's the it. I'm thinking, are you friend of Seattle Supersonic great coach <laughs> Lenny Wilkins? Yeah. With the wait for uh, Mookie Blaylock to make a play like that. Right. Just to get to the free throw uh, line. Lenny Wilkins, one of the all-time, all-time greats. One of uh, his former players, Joe Hassett, is... Which uh, radio analyst for Providence. Newton getting it up there. <laughs> and Bynum on the ball fake commits the foul. What a smart play. And Bynum a little when, when defenses are aggressive and they're trying to overread a little bit. Catching up a little late. Great shot fake. You're going to get yourself three free throws. Bynum with... Only two in this half. He and Hopkins are going to have to break it up. You would think if Providence is going to get out of here with the W. Newton at the free throw line. Now, we talk about offense is getting stuck, a little stuck in the mud, but you got to give UConn's defense a lot of credit. They started, they started this half, and, and really the last nine minutes or so have played the way Providence started the game. Getting in those passing lanes, anticipating where those plays are and listen everyone watches and they know calls they hear it they're yelling it out and they really stymied providence the last couple of minutes well a five minute nine second drought for the friars and this is the largest lead of the night for either team uconn leads by 11. and this scoring run is at 8-0 over two minutes hopkins they're short for that one Probably got grabbed there also. You know, as shot no free throws in the first half. The refs do not want to turn this into a free throw competition the rest of the way. Aline. Klingon anticipated it. Missed the bunny. Just dominating the glass. Finally, it's taken down by Carter. That's when you tell a guy, a teammate, you're 7 2, dump on everybody. Carter, too strong. This will lead to a possible break. Hawkins waiting for help. Klingon. Pulled away by Hopkins. This is a critical stretch here for Providence. They need a bucket badly. And another poor decision to try to bounce pass it in there. Newton, bingo! That's one where you're going to.
gonna slam it on the alley oop. It's a different team with Andre Jackson on the bench. He really gets them balanced in those transition situations, but that time you just tell Klingon keep running rim to rim. This is where I think Ed Cooley is coaching big picture. You guys gotta play through this. You gotta find a way. You gotta find a way to get out of this. Klingon again. The trainer and he's fine. And Ed Cooley won it all ball that time. As the ball was slapped away. These are really nice minutes for Klingon. You see him breathing really, really heavy. Ames. Here's Klingon at the free throw line. Looks like they did take him back into the locker room as we suggested they might before we went to the break. Meanwhile, after the injury, Ed Cooley decided to go ahead and take advantage of this timeout, so he's only got one remaining the rest of the way, and his team finds itself down by 15. This was a 33-32 game in favor of Providence with a minute left in the first half. UConn went on that quick first to start the second half. Providence cut it back to two, but it's been all UConn since. Eight empty possessions with three turnovers, and that one's knocked away by Caravan. Yeah, this... This UConn defense second half has really taken the identity of, of Providence's yeah. defense. Yep. You know, they've really anticipated well. The communication has been wonderful. Their activity, phenomenal. Croswell in traffic. That's when Croswell has to go to work. Yep. Passing the ball to a freshman in the corner. You're a leader of this team. You need buckets. And Sonoko with a nifty move there into the passing lane to disrupt it. And Carter's going to get nailed on that back cut made by Newton. That's number three on Devin Carter. The seventh team foul now on Providence. As um, Breed is going to check into the game. Good to see that Hawkins has made it back in from the locker room where he was briefly. So he's back on the bench. Their athletic trainer, James Doran, one of the best in America, has been doing it a long time. And it's nice he goes over to Kamani Young, taps him on the leg, almost to say, Jordan's good to go. These are the dog days of February, and it's hard to get a road win in this conference anytime. Man. And I would suggest to you the next 753, we're going to find out a lot about Ed Cooley's team. I've not seen him this displeased in his team yeah. in a long, long time. Well, this building is is a different animal. You know, they, they also play in downtown Hartford, which I think everyone kind of knows how I feel about that place. <laughs> it yeah. it should have shut down 10 years ago, but... This is where UConn's home is. You can feel it when you come in here. Even Ed Cooley today said it's a different animal playing in Gamble no versus question. downtown oh, yeah. Hartford. No question. Sonogo got that foul just a second. And to your point, Donnie made earlier, Croswell gets the ball. Even if he's another five feet away from the basket, go to work, right? Yeah, he's got the that drag dribble. You know, he can back guys down. His teammates will get out of the way. Now remember, they're in the double bonus, so another free throw to come. That's, a, that's another reason to go inside. You've been, you know, at a very big advantage in terms of the bonus at the line the entire second half. And, and what happens is when you don't chip away inside, when you get around the five-minute mark, now you're in desperation mode, and those three-pointers become a priority and, and not always good three-pointers. Well, the students really react to Floyd when he comes in. <laughs> and, it, and poor kid, he redshirted last year. Yeah. So it's not yeah. like, you know, he, he didn't see any time on the floor. He said, hey, a better opportunity is when my dad played in Providence. Newton on a runner. That one's knocked away by Carter. And here comes Hawkins back on the floor. Listen to this reception. Not quite Willis Reed, but 
in the neighborhood. Yeah, in the neighborhood. <laughs> For our younger audience, yeah, yeah, Google just it. Google it. Yeah, yeah. He was out only a minute and eight seconds. And he looks to be pretty limber. Oh, <laughs> the iron unkind. Jackson very kind, though, on the glass. Another recycle. Sonogo posting up on Croswell. And then oh, I, don't like I don't like it. Nor, nor does that. Oh, I, Ed's really upset with Brian O'Connell. You, you can't allow can't allow an offensive player to keep backing and pounding down and you not be allowed defensively to stand your ground. I do not like that call. And Brian O'Connell is one of the best in America. You got to let the bigs bang down there. I, would I'm with him. I'm with him. What are you supposed to do, Timmy? I'm, I'm jamming into you, yeah. and I'm backing you, and backing you. Yeah. You're I'm, gonna try to stand your ground. I'm watching the hand signals, and, and Brian O'Connell is now showing armbar. Okay, uh, that's what he's showing. So, yeah. So what do I do? Open up and let yeah. let him crack my rib? <laughs> you gotta allow the defender to defend. Twelve points on the game, eight this half for Sonogo, and you can see Danny Hurley. The maestro pulling all the strings now, asking for the crowd to stand up. In traffic, Hawkins was right on Carter, and I think they're going to tag Hawkins with the foul. They are. And I think they finally got the third foul. <laughs> there was a lot of reaching in there. You see a guy pick his dribble up this close to half court. I mean, that's like seeing blood in the water. You, you attack, but I think that... That was the least of the fouls there on Hawkins. Hawkins jumped like the ankle is in good shape, though, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just went into the locker room, got a little bit of whatever Patrick Mahomes got, and he was yeah. good to go. <laughs> That's it, ready to go. Yeah. Play shot. Look at the line for Carter. The lead remains 17. They talk so often about trying to win those four-minute battles. This is about halfway through two of those, and Providence has got to make something happen. Yeah, you, you talk to coaches this time of year about UConn, and they say they are one of the most dangerous. <laughs> and there's the follow by Caravan. Yeah, I just spotted that slip, and it was a dandy. But Caravan was there to clean it up. Yes, yeah, so he's standing around by Providence. And a good fire that time. Inside. 21 rebounds to five. 21 to five. A rebounding story in favor of UConn in the second half. There's the back down to Sonogo. Adamo is in rhythm. He is in rhythm now. This is what I think the home crowd was waiting for from him tonight. And now it's 75-56. There may not be a run left in Providence. And we talked about Pro Providence getting a quality win over UConn. How about the opposite of that? UConn getting a quality win over a very, very good Providence team. Yes, at home, but this is a Providence team that makes you play their way. They play physical, and if Danny Hurley had any questions about his team's toughness, I think they've been answered. There's the outlet to Hopkins. Fouled by Sonogo. A lot of times when you watch Ed, he, he does coach with a lot of emotion. I think this is one of those moments where he's going to let his veteran players play through this thing. Yeah, because you, you want your teams to feel what it's like to win big and succeed. But you also understand they need to know what it feels like when that taste is sour. Yeah. yeah. And just so you know, you never want to feel that or taste that again. Mm -hmm. you, you just... And sometimes that comes by way of keeping your guys, keeping your starters on the floor, making them stay out there and feel it. Tell you who's enjoying this game right now because it's going to give them a two-game lead. 
in the loss column over over Providence, and that is Marquette. In the regular season, as you start thinking about seeding for the upcoming Big East tournament, which is now just a couple of weeks away. No field goals for Hopkins now in the last 25 minutes. We're not going to win too much on the road with Bryce Hopkins not scoring in 25 minutes. Yeah. With a field goal. Caraban, beautifully done, and he looked right at Bryce Hopkins. I know there's a lot of love for Cam Whitmore, but to me, this kid right here, number 11, yeah. Caraban, has to be freshman of the year in this conference. He plays like a junior. And he's helped make Connecticut better. He has Hopkins with a three ball and a quick timeout for Cooley. The lead is down to 16 at the 423 mark. You, I guarantee you, Shaka Smart is telling them that the next game we play is the most important game we've ever played. And that's how you win championships. That's how you finish at the top of your conference. My team at UConn did it. Back-to-back -back years, and, and what you have to do is take every team and every game like it is the most important game you've ever played. I think the answer from the fans in Milwaukee would be uh, Marquette's got Tyler Cole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They got a lot of great players. Well, they do. Omax Prosper. Beautifully done inside. And Simenko now becoming, to borrow a phrase from my old friend Clark Kellogg, he's becoming the stat sheet stuffer. That's it. He's supposed to be. Well... Timmy, you know in these games, sometimes you're the statue and sometimes you're the pitcher. <laughs> I'm always trying to figure out which one I am when I work with you. It's still an ongoing yeah. process. <laughs> That's how I managed to hang around. I'm still a work in progress. 79-61. <laughs> UConn this half. 42 points. 23 of those, a collaboration of Hawkins and Sonoga. Newton goes crossover. Too strong. Sonogo saves it again. Well, that kind, that play right there is the difference in this second half. The dominance of Connecticut on the offensive and defensive boards. Here's a strip. Floyd almost had it. Caravan an easy one. It's quickly turning into a Connecticut coronation at Campbell Pavilion tonight. So unselfish, even when they get a big lead, UConn. Understanding that you got to stay together, win, lose, or draw. Reed. And a quick burst to the 10. 81-63. You see Ed over there, and I can't. He'll, he'll use this yeah. as motivation for the next three games. I wouldn't want Providence on my schedule next and, and what makes it sting more is the vicinity and how close these schools are to one another and two of the original Big East teams go so far back Caravan Nylon Kid is so good Does, there, there aren't a, there aren't a lot of a lot of deficiencies in his game no. Mentally, physically, no. defensively, he's going to get better. But boy, such an offensive threat. And a quick foul given up by Jackson, coming out quickly on lock. Well, Bynum had a long stretch where he was a non factor. Hopkins played a lot of minutes, but for a number of those minutes, did not get a shot off. Yeah. Just a lot of little things, and sometimes when you're playing in this league on the road, it doesn't have to be big things. We had an incredible number of lead changes, a game that was, uh, you know, a combination of both clubs throwing haymakers at one another, and then all of a sudden the second half starts, and Providence just did not have an answer. Yeah, I thought UConn really adjusted to the way the game was being officiated, although there were some... You know, Danny Rue was going to say some questionable calls. You knew that it was going to turn to a more physical game. And which team, we talked about this in the beginning, skill versus will. But which one will come out on top? And I thought UConn did a nice job of showing both of those. Yeah. Skill early and then the will to play the way, really, that Providence plays. Crowd responding to Hawkins as he leaves, playing his, in all likelihood, last game at Gamble Pavilion. 
Remaining home games will be at the XL Center in Hartford for UConn. Hence the reason they had senior night celebrated tonight. Jackson working on Pierre. Al Katera. So Joey, California, the transfer from San Diego. Now he can just go back to his room and watch Carmen San Diego. <laughs> More. You gotta find Carmen San Diego. That's the issue. Yeah, you gotta reach out, right? And here comes Jackson out of the game. And the response to Sonogo, Newton, and Caravan. Okay, there, there are a lot of amazing home courts in this conference. Creighton, Providence, Marquette's getting there, even though they're in a big NBA building. Now this gym is just so difficult to play in when this team's playing on all cylinders. 50 points second half for Connecticut. Now the youngster, another senior that was honored. Young man probably in his last game from Brooklyn, Richie Springs. He's out there with Cal Casera. See if Diara tries to find him. Is number 13 in life. Diara. Long rebound taken. Here comes Castro the other way. And Rafael gets into the scoring column. This was a highly anticipated matchup that UConn managed to make academic in the last 10 minutes. A marvelous performance, Donnie. Really was. I thought the second half. The message was sent. UConn is better than their record shows. Yeah. And they are they are a force to be reckoned with. They are indeed. Yeah. A lot of respect there. Providence hasn't lost a game by double.